night, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, fellow pandemonium travelers. This is Seattle Pandemonium Shutdown Day 145 by my count. Um, we like phased back down, I think. So like stuff is now more restricted than it was recently. But like our deaths are kind of under control. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I can't figure out what's going on. We had our month, our state COVID tracker today. Uh, I checked it, and it has. I think it was the 24th. It had. We had negative one death. When the hell does that mean? Negative one death? Uh, I don't know. But uh, there's something kind of more pressing. There's something more important. And I've been watching this happen, <clears throat> and it's infuriating. You have people like, what is, is he a senator or is he a representative? See, I don't really know civics at all. I just watch what other people get mad about, and then I understand why they're mad and, and figure out who's right or not. Nadler, Gerald Nadler, who looks like some kind of Keebler elf, um, said he gas he was gaslighting. There's so much gaslighting going on these days, and the media is doing it. And now, in this case, a politician was doing it. A politician was saying Nadler was sit telling uh, was it Flecka stocks telling him the rioting in Portland is a rumor some people in Washington D.C. believe. Okay. Now, that is just astounding. That is, that's amazing, honestly, to just basically straight up say, the rioting isn't real. Now, I suppose if one were, you know, room temperature IQ, or haven't looked at social media in the last three months, one might believe that that is possible, uh, but uh, I, I am I am a, I am flabbergasted. Honestly, like, I'm almost speechless at the audacity of such a gaslighting move. No, it's not real. The rioting isn't real, right? People are just lighting fires outside the courthouse there every night and throwing explosives at the police and stuff, right? It's just amazing. And the, and the media are doing the same thing too. They're just peaceful protesters. No, they're not. The, the wall of moms, okay? The wall of moms, the wall of vets. Leave the wall building to Trump, okay? Look, the wall of moms and the wall of vets, I'm sure they are peaceful protesters. They stand out there and they chant and they yell and they blow, yell into mega, uh, uh, what, megaphones, right? And do their grand sandy scoldy thing. Then they leave and go home. Then all that's left are the radical leftists who are violent, who want to like kill the police and disband the police and they're attacking these guys and gals, I, I assume. <clears throat> and they're lighting things on fire and tearing the barricade down and, and d trying to damage the building. This is really happening. <laughs> it's just, it's just astonishing. So here's the, here's one of the issues, right? Is this isn't a mistake. I don't think, I don't think this is an accident. I think this is legacy, AKA mainstream media. Um, effectively trying to censor reality from no, most normal people who don't necessarily dig in the trenches of like social media and like pay attention to this kind of, to these, to this story, at least in the way a lot of us, if you're listening to me, you probably do too. Um, sh you know, sharing these clips and, and these viral videos of the chaos and this chaos that has gone on across the entire country. Like, we all saw, well, we, again, we online people, I'm gonna say, we, we traded a whole bunch of viral videos right after the George Floyd tape came out when the rioting started. 
and New York City, like Manhattan, was ransacked, right? Now, stop me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure I remember seeing, like, the Macy's building or whatever, absolutely ransacked. Police cars flipped over on fire. Like, the whole, like, all of Manhattan was just, was just looted and ransacked, right? Same with downtown Seattle. Um, the extent of the destruction and violence, I feel like, is being poo-pooed or it's just sort of being downplayed by the mainstream media. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. If, if there's clear, hard coverage from your, your MSNBCs and your CNNs, I, I don't know, go ahead and share the clips with me if they covered this in a responsible fashion because I don't feel like they did. Um, anyways... gaslighting guys I swear they're trying to create a separate they're trying to make a bifurcated narrative right if you see all this destruction you're like oh my god fine bring in feds bring in federal cops to shut this stuff down this is out of control right and it's a continuation of months now of bedlam right just complete chaos and in this chaos is death murder want to, yeah, just straight up murders. Like, they're, like, the, the murder rate is just spiking all over the country in these, you know, again, Democrat-run cities, which is why, like, half a million people have already fled from New York City. A whole bunch of people are probably fleeing from Seattle right now. Um, I know that basically land is being bought up in Montana, sight unseen by people from out of state. Just buy it. I don't care what it is. I don't care where it is. I don't want to care what it looks like. I'm just buying it. You gotta be in a mad scramble to do something pretty irresponsible like that, right? So that's kind of the reality on the ground as far as I can see it, which is why I give these dire predictions for what this city is facing. And I mean, there's a point where I reach for the ejection handle. We're not quite there yet, but I mean, it's not gonna take a whole lot more to make this place completely unlivable. And if that includes if they disband the police. A terrible idea. And in the middle of all this economic turmoil, just a terrible idea. Um, but this narrative then is, if you bifurcate it, I mean, you split what's happening into two separate realities, right? One, in one reality, Donald Trump is causing the riots by having the police there, which by my analysis is not true, at least not in Portland. In Portland, the protesters started attacking the building and they and the police stayed inside for like days and days and days until they started lighting fires then they had to come out to stop them from lighting the building on fire that's at least their narrative that's the timeline i've seen i mean you can still argue that they agitated or whatever but this is all like i find this all to be kind of childish like yes you're out you're destroying federal property literally their job is to protect federal property so you know stop doing that and they'll stop coming out and pepper spraying you. Uh, my, my sympathies kind of wane when you're basically agitating and continuing the violence against them. And, it, 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 and this is starting to become a little bit more uh, common. Like people's sympathies were with the protesters, even with the rioters in some extent. It's like, get mad, okay. But it's now gone on so long that, you know, it's, it is... It's starting to, it's it's demoralizing to have con continuous riots in your city, right? So, the, but the bifurcated narrative is now going to be, Donald Trump caused this because he's a fascist, and this is all his fascist, this, they're using this language like Pelosi did, which is disgusting. This, the brown shirts, or the stormtroopers, there it is, it's the stormtroopers. They're the federal police. It's the same thing Obama had. And like it's like everyone forgot that the police were heavy-handed during Ferguson and Baltimore, too. I just don't... It's so irritating. But people apparently have the memory of goldfish, so I guess it doesn't really matter. Um, but this is, all, this is all media manipulation for the election. This is all painting things a certain way, kind of coloring people's general memory of what's happening into something different than what it actually is. And this is why people say the 
corporate press is the enemy of the people because they do things like this. And it's basically like transparent to everybody who's paying attention. Everybody who's paying attention sees this for what it is and kind of don't uh, and don't particularly appreciate it. I, I don't I don't need I don't need you to filter my reality for me. And in fact, you deceiving me is, you know, you're, you're clearly trying to deceive me. It's not working, but I'm sure you're deceiving other people. So, yeah, this episode is about gaslighting, gaslighting and you. Um, yeah, fact check these clowns. This is the thing about like social media and they would love to shut this down, but they can't is the replies. You get in the replies and just start ratioing the shit out of these, you know, these mainstream news posts that are blatantly inaccurate. And before you know it, everyone else is like, wow, look at how much everyone disagrees with this narrative. And well, just walk anywhere in the street, you know, there's a crosswalk right there, but you know, just walk wherever, it's cool. <clears throat> Anyways, I think that's enough from ranting and raving from me for one day. Bye.